Hi, I'm Karen McNeil, author of The Wine Bible and editor of Wine Speed. And this is People to Know, insider interviews with the most important and fascinating people in the wine business. And today we have the great pleasure of talking to Naoko Dalavale, uh, owner of Napa Valley's Dalla Valley Winery. Naoko has been the driving force behind the winery for more than 30 years. In 2017, Noko was joined by her daughter, Maya, who now makes the wines. And today, the mother and daughter duo run Dalla Valley together. Noko, welcome. We're so pleased to have you. Well, thank you very much, Karen. It's so nice to see you. And I yes. appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So, uh, Noko, let's begin by, if you would just tell us a little bit about your background, where you were born and raised. So I was born in Kobe, Japan, and I was raised in Kobe mainly and uh, partially in Tokyo, but I grew up in Japan. Yeah. Did you drink wine as a child? Well, as a child, uh, well, in Japan, actually drinking is fairly, well, I shouldn't say easy, but yeah, uh, when I was a Oh, probably like 10 or 12, I would have a sip, you know, of right. that, the, my father's, you know, that the medical beer or sake, and then sometimes wine. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, but I don't know about enjoy, but it was really my <laughs> curiosity. Yes, no, I was wondering about that, if, if your mm -hmm. family had indeed, um, you know, drunk European wines, and if perhaps you had been given a little sip here or there as a, as a child. Um, so, so wine was not brand new to you, but tell us how you and your late husband, Gustav, came to, to the Napa Valley and, and started out um, making wine, I believe in the 1980s. Yes, yeah, we, we moved to Napa Valley in 82 from West Indies and we were still spending part, you know, part time here. And then that we finished up, um, um, winery building in 86 and we started producing commercial wine in 86. Yeah. But this is, I, I mean, you just, you're born in Japan. You, you somehow mm -hmm. meet Gustav who is, who was Italian, excuse me. You yes. live in the West Indies and then all of a sudden you show up in the Napa Valley. Like why Napa? Why wine? Well, um, the reason why we moved to Napa Valley was actually to open a restaurant and a spa. And, uh, um, but the something just sort of took us to different passage just because uh, um, my husband was born in the winery in Italy. So when we purchased this small house on the hill, um, he just immediately started saying, I gotta make wine. So that sort of big banana peel, we just put the foot in and then slid into it. The wine business full, full force. I would not recommend it, but yeah, that was uh, um, yeah, that was how we began. It must have been tough in those early years. Oh, absolutely, yes, yeah, because you know we had a little bit of the grapes, so it's not maybe ten tons. In those days, there was no custom, you know, crushing facilities, right? And uh, um, our friends, you know, just look all over. And we found the one place, which was unusual at that time. But the, the thing was, you know, you cannot just bring in 10 tons and you have to make it more and you buy more grapes. And it was a very interesting time, but we were making wine um, that way for about three vintages and we abandoned that. Yeah. Now, were, were both you and Gustav, um, I mean, I know that you've been very hands-on running the winery for 30 years or so, but... In those early years, were you mm -hmm. attempting to learn how to want, make wine yourselves as well? Well, um, not to make wine by, by myself, but um, we, you know, we started the winery together, and uh, and my husband was, you know, into growing grapes, and uh, always once a month, you know, we would sit down with our winemaker and uh, taste the wine and all that. So I really felt it was important to get involved at that time. Mm. So I was always sort of, you know, there and tasting the wine. And yeah, uh, yeah supporting my husband, you know, um, great growing and things like that. Yeah. It's such a beautiful site, Dalla Valle. You, you're on the eastern 
ridge there of, yeah. um, of the mountains and mm -hmm. of the Baca Mountains. And what do you think is so special about that site in terms of why the wine tastes the way it does? Yes, yeah. Um, of course, you know, we, are, we have a wonderful site and uh, our soil composure is very interesting. It's very rocky, but yet we have, uh, you know, some clay to hold the, 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 the water. And then also, I think it's like a really microclimate and uh, the way it slopes, so, you know, the direction, because uh, we have about 18 blocks and we vinify them separately. So we know which personality of, you know, the, the each blocks are. And then, yeah, we are still learning and uh, they are so different. So I think, um, yeah, I think I like to say we've been taking good care of them so they can produce the, the best grapes. And uh, um, our focus has been, like you said, you know, wine growing is the beginning, very basic of the, the producing yeah. grape. Now, you know, some people um, over the years, in fact, a lot of people have referred to Dalla Valle as, as a cult wine, along with maybe five others. I'm wondering if you like that phrase or, or if it perhaps doesn't feel right to you. Right. Um, so that, um, no, in the beginning, you know, uh, we were one of the original uh, cult wines, so to speak. And uh, um, yeah, Jim Lobby of the Wine Spectator um, came up with that, uh, the name and I was telling him, well, it sounds very scary, so I don't like it. <laughs> But in a way, it just sort of, um, instead of appellation or classification, I think that's just did the job eventually to distinguish, um, you know, some of us. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, yeah, I, I have a mixed feeling about that, <laughs> that the cult, that the, yeah. Yeah, the name. Yeah. On the one hand, it's, it, it's of course, a, a, a compliment when journalists Oh, absolutely. Put you on that pedestal, um, right. but on the other hand, it, it is a funny kind of a name. Yes. Um, yeah. Hmm. So Maya, your daughter, after whom you named your most prestigious wine, um, Maya joined you um, a few years ago, and um, what is that like working with your daughter? Well, I think it's sort of um, dream come true. Really, because, you know, when she was growing up, she was not interested in getting into the wine. And I never said anything. I just thought, you know, she should live her life. And uh, um, if she would have become interested in that stuff. But I never really did anything intentionally. But the, she came on her own, started to getting interested in, and also she has a passion for it. And not only that, um, yeah, she, she earned it. She got the education as I sort of, encourage her and uh, she got the good experience at the wonderful wineries in Europe and then in the United States. So, yeah, so I think it's, uh, and then also I always felt like, you know, although I was, you know, very much in charge of the grape growing and all that things that, that you know, but being your own winemaker, you have your destiny in your hand. You have your mm -hmm. own control of your destiny. So I think that's fantastic and I'm very proud of her. And I think, yeah, I think this is really, I, I'm happy about this, yes. Oh, I can only imagine. Do you, I mean, you must taste wine together a lot. Do you mm -hmm. have similar, a similar palate? Do you, do you agree oh, um, when wines yeah, are? I think we do, but I think she has a much better taste. She has a more precise tasting ability. And uh, uh, that compliment came from the, the one of the uh, winemaker from Bordeaux. He sent me that uh, the message specifically, and I was very happy because you I know, know you taste the wine so well, so you know how important it is to have that, the precise tasting um, mm. ability. So yeah, she she's better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud sure of if we if we interviewed her, she would probably say the reverse. But. Um, so Naoko, when you think of your own success, um, though your own success, what what character trait do you think you possess that has been the most helpful in getting you to this point of success? Well, 
I was blessed with this wonderful, you know, beautiful property. But also, I think my ability to keep my ears open and then, you know, very open minded. And then also, I think I feel like I'm a little bit like a conductor of the, the orchestra. So I would just assemble my team and uh, um, I'll make sure I always joke, you know, my job is to make everybody produce the best. So uh, to perform the best. So um, mm. I think, and then also it's really wonderful to, you know, work with the people who love wine and are passionate about it. So we all have the same goal of making the best one we can possibly can. So I think that's the, the um, yeah, I think probably that's the, um, uh, whatever that the re reason yeah. for success. It is very unifying when you are all um, have a, a, a goal together like that. And when you all also love something that is so wonderful and profound as, as great wine. Um, I'm wondering if your winemaking philosophy or even your philosophy of running the winery has, has changed a bit uh, in the last 30 years because you've You've really seen um, the Napa Valley through a very dynamic period in its growth. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I really feel like a wine is a living thing, in meaning like a language changes over the decades, you know, and then the people's taste shifts and. Uh, um, and then also we learn what we like and what would be, you know, what would be the great component of the great wine. So, um, yeah, uh, so definitely, yes. But, you know, I try not to make that the big changes and uh, I try not to be fashionable or anything. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, we just really, like I said before, pay attention to what's going on. And that uh, I think change can happen. Um, but how to control that is um, shows about your ability, you know, and uh, your, um, yeah, your, your, not the talent, but uh, yeah, it's a very important uh, component. Yeah, it's an interesting point because I know um, that usually every year in January, magazines call me up and say, you know, will you write a story about the next trends in wine? And I think there are no trends. It's a long-term business, right? It's mm -hmm. agriculture. There right. are no trends. So, um, I mean, maybe there's super long-term trends like rosé, but, but not changing, staying to staying the course mm -hmm. has really been certainly very successful for, for you at Dalavali. Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, you've, um, you've gotten very good scores over the years from critics, and I'm, I'm wondering how you feel about giving wine, even though you've benefited, how you feel about giving wine a numerical score? Well, I think it's really more for the consumers to have some kind of reference point, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so that's helpful. And uh, sometimes it can be like an encouragement for the producers to get the good scores. Um, but I have to say, I saw both sides of it. So um, yeah, that can be wonderful. And sometimes like, uh, hmm, you know, um, but but overall, I think it's a, um, yeah, it's an interesting system. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day, if we don't need the, uh, those scores help and just we know what we exactly like and that we you find that the producers you can trust, I think that's the best scenario. But in some cases, I think it's happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, so I have, a, I have a both positive and a little bit of the, the mixed emotion, yes. So Naoko, uh, a last question. Um, I'm wondering if you think your, your Japanese ancestry has, um, has allowed you to think about wine in a, in a different or, or special way or about wine's place and culture. Uh, yes, so being Japanese and uh, coming from that um, culture of valuing the traditions 
mm. and uh, um, carrying with the family in a sort of multi-generational and longevity of that uh, uh, brand or uh, family business. I think that has a lot to do with me and uh, um, I, I really value that. So I really see um, having a Dalavare winery means hopefully for going for generations and generations. And uh, um, so I think consciously or unconsciously, you know, that the, without thinking about it or thinking about it, I think I just always um, had that in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I might have influenced my daughter uh, without really being direct about it. And uh, um, yeah, so I think that's, um, yeah, that has a, something to do, I, I think, with my back, you know, background of being Japanese. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. Well, Naoko, thank you so very much. We really have enjoyed speaking with you. And for our complete interview with Naoko Dalavale, please see Winespeed's People to Know page. You are really not going to want to miss it. Thanks, everybody.